The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Because it's amazing what you have in you that doesn't surface until the pressure's on you and, and words, we, you know, we, we, we would say things out of hurt to one another and our family was just fractured and it had, a, it had an echo effect throughout our home. It became a war zone, it felt like, and it was awful. Best-selling author and pastor Jensen Franklin shares openly about his family turmoil that began with a rebellious daughter, next on Life Today. I could smile like that. So, so everybody would smile. Babe. Look over at this camera and smile. On, smile at all those folks here. Babe. I fell so in love with that girl, but I got a smile on my face because I'm introducing somebody that I can't even describe how much I've come to uh, appreciate him, respect him, count it an honor to be a, a real friend. I'm talking about somebody that when I first heard of him, they would say, you know, there's a guy on television and people think he preaches like you a little bit. <laughs> And the, uh, he reminds uh, people of you. And I said, really? They said, yeah, he's got black hair, you know. Of course, he's young and trim like you used to be, you know. <laughs> but it's uh, a guy named Jensen Franklin. And I did, I got to watching him. And, uh, you know, he's probably a whole lot past me. But I could see what they were talking about. There was a lot of fire. And I... I gotten to know Jensen real well. It's been a great blessing to not only preach at the Free Chapel there in Gainesville, Georgia, but to be his friend. Here's, here's a book. It's just how he's, a, he's got New York Times best-selling books. Matter of fact, we'll do another program where we talk more about this, but we're going to, we're going to talk about one of them that really got people's attention. It was on fasting, and we're going to talk about why does that matter. So it has nothing to do with dieting, even though maybe we can use that, but just, just hang in there. The next program, and he'll be with another but love like you've never been hurt. This is huge. So what in the world is this successful pastor with a great church and wonderful viewers on his television program? What is it that he's talking about? It's, it, it seems to me like he's talking about understanding hurt and then loving like you've never been. But let's hear what Jensen Franklin has to say. Would you welcome Jensen Franklin to life today? Uh, thank you so much. Good to see you. Thank you. It's, it's an extreme honor to be here with two of the greatest Christians mm -hmm. that I've ever met in my life. You guys have inspired me. I love your compassion. I love the way you care for the needy and the poor and the broken and the hurting. And uh, you model so well, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I honor you tonight. You're a great, you're a great man of God. And so are you a great woman of God. Thank you, Jensen. I appreciate it. Uh, I want you to just take us on a journey here because, you know, I know enough about the content of the book and yeah. that uh, you had a heartbreaking situation that even in your own life and family made you feel disqualified to even lead your church for a while. Yeah. It was a lot of hurt. People would probably be stunned to know and probably you probably figured you'd never even have to have the occasion or even ever bring it up. But, but, but. Take us on that little yeah, journey. I, I had a season point. where I never wanted to quit so bad. I had, I, I really look back on it now and I realize so much was just hanging on the, on a thin, thin uh, cord there, you know. And what happened was, uh, you know, I have five children. My wife and I, Sharice, have been married 30 years and we had five kids two uh, years apart. That's a lot. I mean, and uh, good timing. Buddy. Four girls, four <laughs> girls in a row, and then a boy in that order. And 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 my girls take after their mother, and they're they're beautiful girls. They're they're beautiful inside and out. And um, the enemy the enemy came after my girls, and we went through a season about nine years ago that I'm just now writing about. It's, you know, I don't think you need to write about stuff when you're in the middle of it but this was about nine years ago. And it, 
it began a three-year process of darkness that hit our house that most people knew nothing about. It, ironically, at the same time, James, the ministry began to explode then. Well, we, we began to be pe national TV, you know, and Christian stations began to ask for our program, and the church grew from hundreds to thousands, and then another campus, and another campus, and another campus. All of this, this, this strange thing of turmoil in our home, my daughter, had gone off and got her into college, a model kid, and um, got around the wrong group that got around the party life. The enemy deceived and made some terrible choices. I'll never forget a Wednesday night, I was about to go speak at our church, and my wife came into my office, and she said, Jensen, we're going to get our daughter. If we don't get her, we may, we may not ever have her again. And she said, I'm go I'll never forget how she said it. She said, I'm going to get our daughter. Are you going to care about this church and preach? Or are you going to go with me? Mm. And I dropped my little sermon outline, and we got in the car, and we drove three hours to Tennessee to, to find our daughter. We knew something. We didn't know all, but we knew something was really, really wrong. And we found her, and we left everything there. And we put her in the car, and we rode back, and... She began to, you know, share what had happened and what was going on in her life. And we thought it would get better. Sometimes, you know, you think, well, this is the end of the darkness. I can see the light in the tunnel. And, and like in your situation with your daughter, I'm sure there were times when you had good reports, but then the bad reports come and it just crushes you. That was the kind of scenario. We would have those days. And then when we got her back home, it, it started all over again, the, you know, and one thing led to another. She, she ultimately ran away. And for about a week, we didn't know where she was. And we, we were having a meltdown like you wouldn't believe. And, um, and ultimately ended up getting married and we received a text on a Saturday as I was preparing to preach that she's, our, our daughter is married. And I'll never forget the next... Um, you had no idea. No. Oh. And the next, the, next, uh, the next Saturday, I had a wedding of one of her best friends, and I watched that father mm -hmm. walk his daughter down the aisle, and it was everything I could do to hold myself together. Mm -hmm. And this story is not just about that. That was the beginning of the message, love like you've never been heard. I heard that phrase, Satchel Paige, a professional baseball player, an African-American, who was the first pitcher in professional baseball, had the saying that, that you've got to love like you've never been hurt. And it came when he would pitch and there would come racial screams from the stands. Mm. And he had, he had several famous sayings, and one of them was, love like you've never been hurt. Right. And right in the middle of all of that I was going through, I hear this phrase. Mm. And when I heard it, it just... It hit me so strong, and the Lord said, if you're going to get through this, you're going to have to love like you've never been hurt. See, it's easy to love people when you don't have a conflict. Yeah. It's easy to love people who, who have the same viewpoint, the same vantage point, and there is a sickness in the body of Christ and in Christians that we need to deal with. We have parents who don't speak to their own children. We have grandparents who've never even seen their grandchildren. They live in the same city, but we just don't get along. And or my kids aren't living right. See, the thing that I begin to do is almost resent my own flesh and blood and feel like the enemy will deceive you with self-righteousness to feel like, well, I, I can't really love her like I ought to because I, how she's living so offends me when actually it ought to be the opposite. Somebody's watching this program right now and one of their children probably, it's possible, has said, I'm gay mm -hmm. or I'm pregnant out of wedlock. What are you going to do? What is a Christian supposed to do? We can pretend like all of us have beautiful plastic uh, uh, Camelot homes, but the truth is Camelot doesn't exist. And every home, sooner or later, every family is going to go through something that shakes you to the core. And you're going to have to do what Jesus did when he was hanging on that cross. 
And he looked down with nails in his hands and he said, Father, I'm going to love them like I've never been hurt. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And, and, and so to make a long story short, God began to do a work in me and in my wife because it's amazing what you have in you that doesn't surface until the pressure's on you and, and words, we, you know, we, we, we would say things out of hurt to one another and our family was just fractured and it had, a, it had an echo effect throughout our home. It became a war zone, it felt like, and it was awful. And, and I, 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 you know, I really wrestled with, should we really tell this stuff? Because it's gonna, people will lose confidence in us, but really? Um, Did you even question, what business do I have being a preacher? What absolutely. I have pastor. I just need to disappear. Absolutely. And I felt like God spoke to me. He did through a, through an elderly gentleman. He came to me and in the middle of this, a pastor, a preacher. And he said, Jensen, I said, I, and I, I was weeping one day. I just broke. And I said, I'm just going to quit. I'm just going to resign. I can't take it. I, I can't get up and preach. And my, I, you know, I, how can I tell others, you know, and it's not working for me. Well, it was working for me, but you, sometimes God has to put you through a process. Don't get weary in well-doing. You will reap if you faint not. And I, um, he said, I'll never forget what he said to me. He said, Jensen, God had two children named Adam and Eve, and he raised them in a perfect environment. He was not a bad father. <laughs> he had quality time with them. He walked in the cool of the day every day with wow, those children. That's awesome. And he said, they messed up but he didn't resign from being God. And he said, you're not going to resign from being pastor and a preacher. You're more called now than you've ever been. Wow. You're a broken vessel, and God's going to use you greater than wow. you've ever been used before. Isn't that good counsel? And, and that's exactly what God did for you. And more than likely in our lifetimes, our journey is going to take a turn that we didn't choose, didn't right. want, never would have thought we'd have had. That's right. But the secret is our relationship with God. And now, God, what do you want to do with this? Here we are. Yeah, exactly. And, and even with God, even our relationship with God, don't you have to learn when you walk through, you know, I, there, you've walked through and others have walked through seasons where there's the unexplainable absence of God. Where are you? Why don't you do something? You could heal this child. You could turn this thing. Where, where are you? Why don't, if you? If you love me, why don't you? This is my baby. This is my child. Do something. And in those moments, you have to learn to love God like you've never been hurt. Mm -hmm. Because well, we talk about... You don't understand some actions are the apparent lack of action. This was with our daughter. You referred to our daughter fighting cancer. Your daughter was fighting a battle with the enemy sitting on her. She's got a disease sitting on her. Nobody had more faith. We walked through all of that. And, and I said when Robin died, if I didn't know God so well, I wouldn't like him. Mm. But see, I knew him. Mm. And I knew he wouldn't hurt me. So good. He knew that if I was hurt, he would love me through the hurt. Yeah. Which is what he did for you. I mean, yeah. he, it's a miracle. And I got to ask you, how is she? Amazing. God has completely touched, restored, renewed. She is in full-time ministry. She works in Atlanta at a great church. She's a media director, has a whole department. She knows everything <laughs> about these cameras and crews. And she is she amazing. Kids? And her husband is full-time in ministry with her, which we never, I, we, we had, you know, just such bitterness in that situation. You know, it's my daughter. And, yeah, sure. And, you know, and you have to, you have to begin. And, and, and I want to say this. It, it's not like it's a magic one thing. The, the first meal that we ate together with them, you know, when we reached out and said, I want to eat with you. I want to talk to you again. I want to, I want to have my family at the table again. You know, that's the most beautiful thing when families start hugging and crying right. and kissing, and loving, taking pictures. So how long has she been right now? How long has it Oh, it's been ever? nine years. <laughs> nine years, right. And she's, she's right. Her husband's <laughs> right. And she's given us a beautiful granddaughter. <laughs> and uh, God has done a miracle. But, you know, it's a process. We, we, like, we like forgiveness to come instantly. Or the, even the finished result of the forgiveness, all the yeah. healing that goes with it. And it doesn't always come instantly. I, I like instant deliverance, but I've found that some of it's progressive. Very I much keep saying, so. I like instant better, Lord. But, it, Very but much the so. walking out sometimes develops things in us that's really important. Absolutely. One, one of the things, that, uh, one of the things that, that I think we have to learn to do is let 
is let God begin to move us forward. Um, in, in Somalia, when our troops went in, you know, to arrest that drug lord back in 1993, and you probably saw the movie Black Hawk Down. Mm -hmm. One of the scenes in that movie really spoke to me, and I preached a message on it, and I put some of it in the book. And there's this commander, and the bullets are flying everywhere. They're being, they're being attacked and, and shot up. And he turns to one of his soldiers, and he says, we got to get out of here or we're going to die. And he says, get in the Humvee and drive. Mm -hmm. And the guy looks back at him, and he's all bloody, half his hands blown off. And he said, but, but Colonel, I'm wounded. I'm shot. And the answer that the Colonel gives back is a classic. He says, we're all shot. Shut up, get in the truck, and drive. <laughs> and I preached a message on that, that you're not the only one that's been betrayed, hurt, broken, disappointed, lied on, deceived. Sometimes you just have to say to yourself, shut up get in the truck and drive. It's time to move forward. It's time to, if you sit there and rehash and rehash and rehash all that's gone wrong, you're going to die there. You got to get in the truck and go on and drive out of there and let God take you to a new place. And God is ready to give you the grace to do it. And that, to me, that's what you're writing here. Absolutely. And trying to inspire people that, uh, you know, couldn't believe that God that's leading a good church, a great church, has got all this going on. And then for you to go through it, come out on the other side and be able to really say it in experience that when you are hurt and you're hurt deeply, you got to learn to love like you've never been hurt. And that's a good illustration from that uh, leader to that commander. <laughs> Would you say thanks to Jensen Franklin for sharing his story, uh, for being able and willing to open up your heart and your life? Thank you. And, uh, you know, I just uh, praise God for you that you're willing to do it. This is a great book, and you can get it online right now. Love Like You've Never Been Hurt, Jensen Franklin. You can watch him on television. And, uh, you know, I want to tell you something else. We're, we're going to have him back. We're going to talk a little bit more about this. But we're also going to touch on something that was probably one of, maybe the first New York Times bestseller he wrote. Had to do with something that's just not at all popular with most of us, and that's fasting, you know, like giving up something, especially food. You know, say, oh, maybe I'll fast uh, broccoli, okay? You know, yeah. give that up for Lent or whatever it is. Look, let, let, let us, let Jensen help us, all of us, because that's what he's done right here today. Don't you think, Betty, what he's shared? And I, and I just uh, want you to know, we'd be glad to send you the book. Here's what we're asking you to do. And Jensen, this is just the most fabulous thing that we can do. We can set people free that are hurt every day because they've been taken captive and they've been trafficked sexually. Mm. You're gonna see right now in a moment, one of the most beautiful little girls you've ever seen. She, is, she would be the dream. Somebody says, well, I'd like a, a model. Well, she's being exploited and trafficked and sold sexually in bondage and destroyed by that horrible desire for self-gratification or greed and using somebody. I want you to look at her and I want you to see the person that God wants to make her to be and only love. Now, listen to me. I'm not exaggerating. You're going to see love expressed in the words of Sheila Walsh. But the love that heals little girls like this has to come from you. Yes, it does. You're the healing factor here. You are the answer. You are the solution. And you won't be alone. Watch carefully and very prayerfully. ຫົບໄວ້ຫາຍພຽວໃຫ້ຕາເວດັກຄະນາມຍົ່ງ <coughs> 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 <
Nay, I will little. I gave why no more pain on what to do. You why no more. Get on the day, get her out the door. You bought the door. You take gain on the lap cow. It's clear to me today more than it has ever been that I know. Nothing, nothing of suffering compared to this beautiful girl and thousands and thousands like her. It's really overwhelming. It's overwhelming because in Southeast Asia, she's not alone. There's thousands of girls like this and the only hope is not the government stepping in. The only hope is the body of Christ. In Luke chapter 19, verse 10, Jesus said, the Son of Man came to seek and to save those who are lost. That's why Jesus came, and that's why you and I are on this earth. We can't wait for somebody else to move in and help. It's our job, it's our responsibility. The sex traffickers are not sitting back thinking, well, you know, we'll take a day off. They are there. They're relentless. And if we as the body of Christ don't care more than they care, then God have mercy on us. That beautiful little girl represents thousands of girls like her. They have been promised something by deceptive people who intend to use them for their own selfish gain and then people exploit them for an attempt at gratification, total selfishness. But love is the hope, and you could see that being expressed by Sheila. You don't fly like Betty and I did for 20 years all over the world and plant yourself in the midst of misery if you're not sent by God. I mean, you just, you know you're sent. She was sent. And she says of all the things she's done all over the world in ministry, the most powerful and gratifying thing she's ever done is go and put arms of love around people like that. But, but the reason she's able to do this, this is Sheila. She knows in her heart she's not alone. That little girl's not going to be left there alone. And all those missionaries and relief workers are not going to be left literally helpless in their ability to meet the need because of you. Sheila has seen what love does through you the viewers of life today, and she's been overwhelmed by it. So what I'm asking today is for the greatest outpouring of love possible, that every single person watching us right now would say, I'm gonna rescue that girl. I'm gonna rescue one like them. You, you know what Jensen Franklin, like our guest this week said? He said, I'll match the first $5,000 that mm -hmm. comes myself. Mm -hmm. I wanna do that. I'm just seeing this, I wanna do it. Okay, listen, there, that's the love of God. So. What you give today, this is beautiful because we've had a group of our friends step up and say they're going to match over $300,000 of what you give. Well, we just got something added to that. In other words, as an encouragement. So what you do will be doubled. $128 is what it takes to reach, rescue, and begin the restoration process for a year. $128. You give that right now, and I pray you will. I hope you'll go get your mic card or get your check. Make it to life because what you're giving Call the phone number there and say, I'm putting it in the mail, or take your bank card, call the number, or go online, use that card and say, here's my gift. Use it just like a check. You give $128, it's double. You just rescued two. I ask, and I ask unapologetically, because I don't think you need help guarding your money. I think maybe you may need to use it more wisely sometimes, but I don't know if you can use it any more wisely than setting somebody free. When Jesus came and set captives free, and as the Father sent me, even so send I you, I would say we can get on with the program. I mean, this is the way we set captives free. So I will say, would you set 10 free? And I ask this every time I have a chance. Do all you can. $1,280, 10. No, now it's 20. It doubles. We have some gifts to send you. You give that $1,280 gift that'll be double. We send you the beautiful Bridge of Faith canvas by Thomas Kincaid. It's beautiful. But right now, by going online or going to the phone, making that gift, you're becoming an answer to somebody's prayer. The missionary, the parent of those children, the person themselves as they're in captivity, the person that needs to be headed off. You're the answer to their prayer. Would you go right now? Thank you so much for making that gift. Thank you. Thank you.
Behind the bright lights, there is a darkness where a world of violence and sexual abuse runs rampant, scarring the souls of millions of young children. With their bodies broken and hopes crushed, these children are trapped in a never-ending nightmare. With your help, Mission Rescue Life can shine the light of God's love in this dark world to reach, rescue, and restore children and young people to the beauty God designed for them to enjoy. With a generous opportunity of a $320,000 matching gift, your gift of $128 to help rescue a child will be matched to help two children. Your $64 gift will be matched to help rescue one child from the horrors of human trafficking. And a $32 rescue gift will be doubled to $64. With your gift of any amount today, we'll send you the Names of God Prayer Journal. From Adonai to Yahweh, this journal is filled with beautiful photographs to help you reflect on 31 different names of God found throughout Scripture. With your gift of $128 or more, you'll receive the Names of God Bible. This special edition NIV large print Bible is engraved with the many names of God, a beautiful reminder that the God we serve is infinitely good. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,280, which will now help rescue 20 children, and you may request a beautiful Bridge of Faith frame canvas print by Thomas Kincaid. Please call, write, or make your gift online. Well, you know, I'm excited about the fact that I think if you can help, you have any ability at all, you're going to do it, knowing it's double. Today, if you say, James, I really would like to have Jensen's book. I need to understand what he's talking about. He's a great preacher. I think he's a great writer. He's going to be back to talk about it more on another program, and we're actually going to talk about another best-selling book that he wrote. But I hope you'll join me and Betty not only expressing thanks for Jensen, but committing to pray for him and his family, his church, and all the campuses everywhere they're reaching out, and all of his ministry on television. You can watch him, and I hope that you will. I hope you support him in prayers and, and financially. Would you join Betty and me in saying thanks to Jensen? Thank you. Thank you so much. Jensen, thank you, buddy. We look forward to talking to you next program. Okay? You. Thank you. Thank y'all so much. You are a blessing. You bless because of your love. What a lack of purpose does for most people is it causes them to, in life, just, just go through the motions. The Purpose Playbook, tomorrow. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.